Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to go over all of my new graphic and performance settings for Sim Update 11 coming up on this episode of 2020 Flight Simmers. Welcome back everyone. In today's video, we have a lot of information to go over, so please take advantage of the chapter section down below. I'm going to try to keep this as short and simple as possible, so I've done some more in-depth tutorial videos. Links for those will also be down in the description. First, we're going to go over my five recommended window settings for the best performance inside of Microsoft Flight Sim. Next, we're going to go over all of the NVIDIA control panel settings. Lastly, we're going to jump inside the simulator and go over all of my in-sim settings. Now for this, we're going to go over the PC and VR settings, but for those of you who are flying in VR, we're not going to be going over any of the OpenXR toolkit settings. We're going to save that for another video. If that video is available, it will also be down in the description. If you have any comments along the way, post them down below in the comments section and I will get right back to you. And as always, if the video helps you out, be sure to hit that subscribe, tick on that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. It is greatly appreciated. Before we get started with any of our settings and tweaks, the very first thing that we want to do is create a system restore point. So to create a system restore point, head down to your search bar and type in restore. Once you have done that, at the very top, you'll see create system restore point. We're going to give that a left click. Once that opens, we're going to head down to local disk C drive and make sure that the protection is on. If it is not on, we're gonna highlight by clicking on it and then go down to configure. In here, we wanna make sure that we turn on system protection and below, we wanna set this to about 5% usage. Once that's done, you can hit apply, okay, and now we're ready to create that system restore point. We'll go over to create, name it whatever you wanna name it, and then hit create. This will take about a minute or two once it finishes, I'll bring everybody back. All right, so our restore point is successfully created. We can hit close and then OK to close out of the application. Now let's move into the five Windows settings and tweaks. The first one we're going to go over today is the MS Config application. To do that, we're going to head down to the search bar and type in MS Config. At the very top, you'll see System Configuration app. We're going to left click on that. If this is your first time loading this application, it's going to look a little bit different. Most likely, your startup selection is going to be checked for normal startup. We're going to change that here in just a second. Before we go over any of the setting changes in this application, I've done an in-depth tutorial about this down below in the description if you'd like to check that out. The reason why I chose this as being the first tweak for Windows is because there's been a couple people that have noticed some adverse effects after they've performed this tweak. That means they've seen some extra lag or stutters inside of Windows itself. So what I recommend to do is to perform this tweak, restart your system, and then see how your system reacts. If everything is acting normally, you have no stutters and no lag with inside Windows, then you're good to move on. So we're gonna head over to the boot menu And then we're going to go down to advanced options. Once in advanced options, you're going to head up to the top left and check number of processors. You're going to click on the drop down, use your mouse scroll wheel to scroll down as far as you can, and choose the maximum amount of processors that you have available. Once that's done, we can hit OK, hit apply, and we can hit OK. At this time, it's going to ask you to restart your system. You want to do that and restart your PC just to make sure everything is working properly. Now, if for some reason after your PC boots up, it is not working properly and you're noticing a little bit of lag or some stuttering inside of Windows, then all you need to do is to go back up, check normal startup, hit apply and OK. And it should ask you to restart your system again. After it restarts, it should operate as it did before. The next application that we're going to go over today is the Intelligent Standby List Cleaner. We're not going to go over the download and installation process as I've already done a complete tutorial on this. I'll post that down below in the description as well. What this will do is will help us control 
and manage our RAM usage for the simulator. Once you have downloaded and installed this application, there's a couple things that we need to do to make sure that it's set up properly for your PC. Over here on the left hand side, you want to make sure that this first number in the box is going to be 1024. The second number down below is all going to be based upon your RAM that you have installed in your PC. So whatever you have, just divide that in half and that number is going to go in this box. But remember, it's going to be in megabytes. So for instance, I'm using 32 gigs of RAM. So half of that is going to be 16 gigs or 16,000 megabytes. Below that, we have a couple checkboxes here and I have the launch ISLC on user login. That way it will always auto launch the application, but it will not auto start the application. Over here on the right hand side, we want to make sure that we set the wanted timer resolution to 0 0.50. To do that, you'll just highlight the box, type 0 0.50, and if there's anything left over, you can just use your delete key to delete those numbers. Below that, you want to tick the enable custom timer resolution. Down below, we have the ISLC polling rate. If you tick on the drop down, we have a couple options here. If you have a low end system, you want to check the 1000. If you have a mid to a higher end system, we're just going to check the 500. This is going to be how often this program is going to refresh itself. Once everything is set up inside of the application, then you want to make sure that you hit the start button. If you do not hit the start button, it will not start the application and your current timer resolution will not change. You can also click the purge standby list and that'll clear out any built up RAM or memory that's in your RAM on your system. After you hit the start button on the application, you want to make sure that your current timer resolution says 0.5. If it does not say 0.5 and it says 0.498 or anything other than 0.5, then it can introduce added latency to the system. So to make sure that this is going to say 0.5, there is a couple settings that we can change. To do that, we're going to head back down to the search bar and type in CMD. We're going to right click on the command prompt and then click run as administrator. Once you have your command prompt open, there's two commands that we're going to type in here. These will also be listed down below in the copy and paste section in the description, so you don't have to type them out. The first command that we're going to type here is bcd edit space forward slash set disable dynamic tick and then the word yes. Once you have that, you're going to hit enter and then you will see the operation completed successfully. The second command that we're going to type in here is bcd edit space forward slash set space use platform tick space yes. Then you're going to hit enter and it will show you that the operation completed successfully. And that's pretty much it. We can exit out of that. Then you can reboot your system and your current timer resolution should now say 0.5 milliseconds. If you would like to revert back to the original, I will also have that posted down below in the description. Once we're done with this, you do not want to exit out of the application. If you do, it will close it completely and not be working in the background. So we're just going to minimize that and move on with the next tweak. The next thing that we're going to go over is the high precision event timer and how to disable that. Again, I've also done a video on that link will be down in the description. To get there, we're going to head down to the Windows bar, right click, and then we're going to go up to Device Manager. Left click on that. Once you're in your Device Manager, you just want to scroll all the way down to where it says System Devices, and then tick on the drop down next to that. Then we're going to scroll all the way down to where it says High Precision Event Timer, right click on that, and then you're going to click Disable Device. Now, I don't have that here because I've already done that, so you just want to tick on Disable. If you want to re-enable it, just click on Enable Device. Once you're done with that, we can go ahead and exit out of that. The next thing we're going to go over is how to set our preferred power setting for Windows. To do that, we're going to head down to the search bar again and type in Power. At the top, you'll see Edit Power Plan. That's not what you want to pick. We're going to go down to Choose Power Plan and left click on that. This will open up all the available power plans for you to choose on your PC. 
You may have a couple extra that you don't see on my screen, but we're going to choose either high performance, ultimate performance, whichever one that you have, we're going to click on that. Once you have done that, we're going to now go ahead and tweak this a little bit further by change plan settings over here on the right. Once we open that menu down here at the bottom where it says change advanced power settings, we're going to give that a left click. That'll open up the new advanced power settings menu. And now we're going to go through here to make sure this is set up properly. First, under hard disk, you want to make sure that turn off hard disk after zero minutes is set. Next, we're going to go down to wireless adapter settings, power saving mode, and you're going to make sure that this says maximum performance. Once we're done there, we can head down to USB settings, USB selective suspend setting, and you want to make sure that this is set to disable. Below that, we have the PCI Express, link state power management, and you want to make sure this is turned off as well. Once you have those couple settings changed, go down, hit apply, OK, and now our power setting has been set for Windows. We can hit save changes and exit out of that. The next two settings we're going to go over today are game mode and HAGS mode. That's short for hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. So to get there, we need to go down to the search bar and type in game. When we do that at the very top, game mode should appear. We're going to left click on that. Here's where we can adjust our game mode settings. And I have tried this both on and off on my system and I saw no difference either way. So I just chose to leave this off. If you get positive results keeping game mode on, let me know your system specs down below in the comments. That may help out some other users. The next setting we're going to jump into is HAGS mode and we can get there right from this page by going down to graphic settings and giving that a left click. Once we're here, we can adjust the HAGS mode or hardware accelerated GPU scheduling either on or off. I recommend this one 100% to keep it off. You can think about it, but don't do it. If you turn this on, you will most likely create stutters and lag within the sim. So if you are noticing that, make sure that your HAGS mode is in the off position. The last thing we're going to go over on this page is a graphics performance preference. You'll notice here that I do not have Microsoft Flight Simulator showing here below. So we want to go ahead and add that so we can adjust the performance of the application. To do that, we're going to tick on the drop down, click on Microsoft Store app. Now I do want to preface this by saying I am using the store bought version of Microsoft Flight Simulator. So if you're using the Steam version, it may be a little different. In any case, it'll populate the drop down. We can then click on that and then choose Microsoft Flight Simulator. Click the Add button. Now that we have added Microsoft Flight Simulator, we can now choose the options here below. Click on that, choose High Performance, Save, and we are now set with this page. You can close that out. The last thing that we're going to do is to set up our virtual memory for Windows. To do this, we're going to go down to our search bar again and type in performance. When you start typing that in, at the very top, you'll see adjust the appearance and performance of Windows. We're gonna left click on that. This should open up the performance options menu. At the top, we have a couple different tabs. We're gonna start with the visual effects tab on the left. Down below, you probably will have one of these selected for your PC, but if you go down and check on custom, and then you can pause the video here and check the boxes that I have down below. I found this is a good balance between performance and aesthetics or appearance that you'll see on your screen. Once you're done there, we're going to head up to the advanced tab and then we're going to go down to adjust for best performance of programs. Below that, we have the virtual memory settings. To change this, we're going to head over to the change box and click on that. Now this will open up the virtual memory menu. If you've never opened this before, most likely at the very top, you will have this box checked for automatically manage paging file size for all drives. Now, what I recommend to do is to untick this and we're going to select the drive that has your operating system on it. My operating system is on my C drive, so that's the one I'm going to choose. Below that, we want to make sure that we tick custom size. Now, these figures that we're going to put in here are all going to be based upon your RAM memory that you have in your PC. The formula that we're going to use for the initial size 
is going to be 1.5 times the amount of memory that you have in your system. Now also keep in mind that this is in megabytes, not gigabytes. So for me, I have 32 gigs of RAM in my system. So the formula will go something like this, 1.5 times 32,000 megabytes will equal 48,000 megabytes for our initial size. For the maximum size, the formula is gonna be three times your RAM size will equal what you wanna put in this box. Once you have that finished, we can click set, go down, hit okay, and we have now just set up our virtual memory on our system. And that takes care of all the Windows settings and tweaks for Microsoft Flight Simulator. So now let's get into the NVIDIA control panel settings. The first thing that I would like to do is to go up to adjust image settings with preview. Down below here, we're gonna tick on use my preference emphasizing, and we're gonna turn this all the way to performance. Then we're gonna check on the box above that to use the advanced 3D image settings and then hit apply. Now, why did I just do that? Well, for any of the settings that we may not be setting ourselves, it's automatically gonna choose the best performance settings for those particular settings that we couldn't choose. Yeah, I know that's a mouthful, but that's, who, that's basically what it's doing. The next thing that we're gonna do is to head up to manage 3D settings. In here, we have two tabs at the top, one for global settings and one for program settings. If you're only using this for your simulator, then you can just set your global settings. But if you have multiple other things that you're running on your PC, games, sims, things like that, you may wanna set each individual one up separately. To do that, we're gonna go over to the program settings. Once we're here, we're gonna click on the drop down and find Microsoft Flight Simulator. If you don't see Microsoft Flight Simulator here, untick this box and then go to add, and then you can add Microsoft Flight Simulator. Once we're in this menu, we can now adjust any of these settings here, and they will only take effect once the simulator is running. So now let's take a look at all the different settings that we have here below. The first one we're gonna go over is image scaling. This is short for the NVIDIA NIS tool. You'll notice here that we cannot adjust anything here, and this has to be done in the global settings. Now, for those of you who are on a lower end system, I highly recommend to check out the image scaling feature inside the NVIDIA control panel. To adjust these settings, go over to global and then go down to image scaling. We're gonna turn that on. You can set the amount of sharpening that you want and then make sure you tick on the overlay indicator. Now let me explain what you just did. What this tool is gonna to do, it will allow us to choose a lower resolution inside of the simulator, and then it will automatically upscale that to our native resolution of our monitor, all while adding a little bit of sharpening behind that to give about the same clarity as you had before. I hope that makes some sense. So play with this and see what you get if you do like it, leave a comment down below and let me know what your settings are on your system. The next one is ambient occlusion. Of course, that says it's not supported for this application. Can't change that. Below that is anisotropic filtering. We're gonna put that on application controlled. Anti-aliasing FXAA. Make sure you turn this off. If you accidentally have this on, you will notice in your FPS tool inside of the simulator, we'll go over that a little bit later, that you will be limited by an RDR thread. So make sure that this is turned off. Below that is the anti-aliasing gamma correction. And I leave this on, this is also the default setting for this particular setting as well. This is going to really help with the colors inside of the sim. So you can try it off and you'll see what I'm talking about. The colors are not very good. They're a little bit washed out. So by turning this on, it will give just a little bit better color saturation. Anti-aliasing mode, we're gonna leave this on application controlled. Below, these two are not available to set here, so we're just going to skip by those. Next is the background application max frame rate. So this may be a little confusing to people, and I was confused at first until I was schooled by a couple of the viewers. 
So what this is going to do is this will actually set a background max frame rate for the simulator if you click off of the screen. If you're on a two screen system or say you're using windowed mode, when you click off of the Microsoft Flight Simulator window, it will then make the Microsoft Flight Simulator run at whatever FPS you have in here. So I recommend to just keep this off and click OK. Below that we have CUDA GPUs. We're going to go down and select the GPU that you're using. Under that is low latency mode. Now I have tried this on, off, ultra, and for Microsoft Flight Simulator, I believe they've actually enabled this in the new update for us. We'll get into that in just a little bit, but this is going to hardwire everything so that it always runs in ultra low latency mode. I've picked up several FPS by keeping this in ultra, and I also recommend to use this if you're in VR now as well. Below that we have max frame rate, and this will cut your frame rate to whatever you want while you're in the sim. So this is a little bit different than background application max frame rate, because this will actually adjust the frame rate of whatever application that you have in focus on your monitor. So while you're actively gaming on the simulator, this will limit your max frame rate. I have this set to off. Some people have played with this before for VR, but for me, off is always best. OpenGL rendering for GPU. We're gonna tick the drop down and select your GPU. Below that we have power management mode and here we have two different options, either normal or maximum performance. I choose normal for this and that's because I don't want my GPU running at full kilt all the time, even if it's not required. This will help reduce some heat in your system and also can reduce some stutters and lags. So try that out for yourself and see what you get. Below that is the preferred refresh rate. We're gonna leave that on application controlled. Below that we have all of our texture filtering options. The first one is the anisotropic sample option. And with this one, if you notice any shimmering objects or glistening things like glitter on your screen, make sure that you turn this one off. If you keep it on, it can help boost your performance a little bit with the negative effect of those glistening objects. Below that, texture filtering negative LOD bias, I recommend to turn that on clamp. So what this is actually gonna do is while you're flying any static objects, it will not induce extra aliasing on. So if you have this on allow while you're flying, you could notice some pixelization. This can help reduce that pixelization. It's not gonna get rid of everything because as we know, the simulator has its own little quirks here and there, but this will greatly reduce the amount of pixelization that you will see. Below that, we have the texture filtering quality and if you tick on the drop down here, I recommend to put this on high performance. I don't really think it does anything other than changing some of the other texture filtering options. Let me show you what I'm talking about. We'll hit high performance. And if we take a look here at the anisotropic sample option, it just turned that on. And the reason why it did that is because remember I told you with this on is gonna give you a little bit better performance with that negative adverse effect of some shimmering objects. So again, we're gonna go back and make sure that's turned off. So if you change the texture filtering quality, make sure that you check your other texture filtering options that they stay where you want them. So below that, we have the texture filtering trilinear optimization. We're gonna leave that on. Threaded optimization, we'll leave on auto. And triple buffering, we're gonna leave that off. Now, what is triple buffering? This is going to help if you're not going to be using V-Sync, I believe, then you can turn on triple buffering and that'll help screen tearing. But in all honesty, I've tried this on or off and I really didn't see much of a difference. So I just leave it off. Below that, we have the vertical sync option. Now this can vary between system to system. If you are on an i7 processor versus an i9 processor, you may have different results using vertical sync in the NVIDIA control panel. And what I mean by that, if you're getting screen tearing inside the sim, when you turn your head side to side or you move your camera side to side, and you get a lot of screen tearing, 
this is where we can help with that tearing effect. Now for this setting, I can only give you recommendations based on the previous systems that I've had. For me, on my older system, which was an i7 processor, I had to keep this on fast for vertical sync. Now keep in mind, any setting in here other than use 3D application setting will disable your in-sim vertical sync settings. Once I upgraded to an i9 processor, that same setting did not work for me anymore, but I used the exact same GPU and it gave me different results. So again, this will vary based on your system and I highly recommend to switch between the two. So if you're on the older system, use the fast mode. And if you're on an i9 processor or newer, then I would use the 3D application settings for inside the simulator and then turn on vertical sync in the simulator and that got rid of all my screen tearing. If you have any questions on this, leave them down below in the comments and I'll try to answer them as best I can. Below that is the virtual reality pre-rendered frames and I've set this on one. If you add two or three frames, this can add some induced latency and can also cause micro stutters in your game. Some users have reported by turning this on too has helped with the smoothness of their sim. So I'm not one to judge here. You do what works for you and stick with it. All right, so now that we have gone through all the NVIDIA control panel settings, I also wanna to touch on one last thing down here in the system information. If you're using the latest or newest game ready driver, you will notice that I am lacking a couple of the settings inside of the NVIDIA control panel. I have tried both versions of the new driver, the studio driver and the game ready driver, and I've had issues with both of them. They've created more stuttering, more lags and crashes to desktop. So what I recommend for you to do if you are having any of those issues is to roll back your driver to a previous version. Also, if you look down in the menu here, I have resizable bar also turned on. If you are somebody who is using resizable bar, I went over this in a previous video, link will be down in the description. Keep in mind that anytime you upgrade your NVIDIA driver, that you also have to do those three setting changes in the NVIDIA profile inspector to make sure that your resizable bar is turned back on again. So now that I've told you that about the driver, let me show you how to revert or how to download a previous driver from the NVIDIA website. So let's take a look at the NVIDIA website here. Links will be down in the description and will bring you up on the driver download page. We're not gonna click anything at the top here. What we wanna do is head down to the bottom and where it says beta and older drivers, you're gonna left click on that. Once that opens, now you will enter all of your GPU specs at the top, and most likely your Windows driver type is gonna be DHC. If you're unsure about that, on the system information panel, right underneath the driver version, tells you what driver type you are using. So you'll make sure this says DHC, you'll put in your GPU, and then we can hit search. Also, before you hit search, Make sure that you check on all for all of the different drivers. Below will show all the previous drivers that are available. And the first three that are in this list, I do not really recommend unless it works good for you, because these are the ones that I've seen the most issues with. If you want a good game ready driver, I would go with the one on October 12th or the studio driver from September 20th. That's the one I'm using. To revert back to either one of these drivers, you would just click on it and it would then start the download in your web browser. Once it finishes that download, you can then click on the download and run the exe file and start the installation process. All right, so now that we have gone over this, we can close out of the system information tab. And there's one more thing that I would like to go over here on the left hand side. Under display, you'll click on change resolution and you'll go down and make sure that you're using your native resolution for your monitor. To the right, you wanna make sure that you choose the lowest frequency that you can. The reason for that is these frequencies relate to FPS. You're never hitting 120 FPS nor 144 in Microsoft Flight Simulator. 
So the closer you can get your monitor refresh rate to the FPS rate is going to give you the best quality. Below that we have some color settings here and this will also greatly enhance your colors on your monitor. You want to check the use NVIDIA color setting, make sure that you're on the highest 32 bit and on the output color depth, we're going to choose 12. Below that, we make sure that this is on full and then you can hit apply. You'll have a little pop up here just to confirm your changes. We can hit yes and we're good to go. Before we close out the NVIDIA portion of the episode, I'll post a link down below in the description if you would like to gain up to 30% more FPS inside of Microsoft Flight Sim and you don't use GeForce Experience, I highly recommend to check out that video. I go over the full process of how to de-bloat your NVIDIA driver software and get the maximum performance. Before we go ahead and launch into Microsoft Flight Simulator and go over all of the in-sim settings, I would first like to go over some more advanced settings in the Microsoft configuration file. The easiest way that I have found to get there is to open the community shortcut that everybody should have on your desktop. You're gonna left click on that. At the very top, you'll have the address bar. Here, we're gonna go back to the local cache and at the very bottom, you'll see user configuration. For those of you who do not have the community folder on your desktop, down below in the copy and paste section, I will also have the address that you can copy and paste in your address bar at the top here. The only difference is the section that is highlighted in blue will be your PC name, not my PC name. Again, I am using the store-bought version of Microsoft Flight Simulator. So now you've gotten to this point, we're going to left click on user configuration and then we're going to right click on that. We're now going to open it with the editor of your choice. I'm choosing Notepad++. Once this opens, it may look a little daunting if this is your first time viewing this, but trust me, it's not all that bad. And there's only a couple settings that we're going to adjust in here because most of these will take place inside of Microsoft Flight Simulator. So the first thing that you want to do is to scroll all the way down to where it says post process settings. Now these are going to be for all of your monitor or your PC settings in Microsoft Flight Simulator. There's a couple settings here that I recommend to turn off and there's a couple optional ones depending on your personal preference. So for sure you want to make sure that you turn off fringe. Now how do you turn off one of these settings? This is going to be binary either a one or a zero. If it's going to be on, it should be with a one next to it. If you're going to turn something off, you'll have a zero next to it. So you want to make sure that you turn off your sharpening, turn off your fringe, and most importantly, turn your film grain off. The two that are optional here are eye adaptation and color grading. Some people like the color grading that Microsoft Flight Simulator adds and others think it's a little bit too saturated. So I would play around with these and see what you like. Once you have adjusted all of your settings, you need to make sure that you save this so that they are implemented in Microsoft Flight Sim. So to do that, we're gonna go up to File, go down to Save, and that will save all of these settings for your configuration. Now we're gonna go ahead and take a look at these settings for VR. And for this section, we're gonna scroll all the way to the bottom now. And we're gonna head down to the post-process section here. For VR, I recommend to turn all of your post-processing off. This will also enhance the performance in VR because it is not channeling your image through all these other avenues before it gets to your headset. Again, once you have everything set, you wanna go up to File, down to Save, and you are all set to go. I do have one more tip for the user configuration file. If you notice that your settings are getting switched around after you load into Microsoft Flight Simulator and adjust some of your graphics settings there, then the fix for that is when you're setting up your settings inside of Microsoft Flight Sim, you want to make sure that you're not using any pre-configured settings. As soon as you change to one of the pre-configured settings, it will automatically change some of your file settings in the user config. Once we hop into the simulator, you're going to set all of the settings under custom settings versus a global setting. I hope that makes sense. And if you have any questions about that, just post it down below in the comments section. Hey, if you're enjoying the content today and like to help us out even further, go down below and tap on the thanks icon. Your support is greatly appreciated.
the last part of the video, we're going to go over all of my in-sim game settings. So I'm going to fire up the simulator and I'll bring everybody back once we're inside. Welcome back everyone. Before we get started on the in-sim settings, I first want to touch on a big problem a lot of people are having before and after the latest update. And that is with the AI traffic. Now, when I say AI traffic, that also includes AIG and FSLTL. Now, the issues that people are having is the traffic handling, both in air and on the ground. You'll notice that you still have a ton of planes piling up at the end of the runways, on your taxiways, doing circles at the end of the runways, not taxiing properly, and in the air, you'll notice they are too close on approach, you have a lot of go-arounds, and there's many other issues that people are experiencing. Well, a great developer has created two applications that I will also be doing a tutorial on. If I've done that already, links will be down in the description for those. So I highly recommend to check those out, and that will help fix a lot of our AI traffic problems inside of the simulator. All right, so now that we have got that out of the way, let's jump over to the in-sim settings. To get there, we're gonna head over to Options, General Options, and that'll take us to all our graphic settings and all the other settings over here on the left. Before we start going through each of these graphical settings, I first wanna show everyone how to turn on your FPS tool inside of Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now this tool is going to really help you hone in on your particular settings for your PC. I'll explain here in a moment. To get there, we're gonna to go to Developers, and you're gonna turn this on. Hit Apply and Save. Now, you'll see the FPS tool just populated here on my screen. It's not going to do that on yours if it's your first time. To get that to populate, we're gonna head up here to the Options tab, and then you're gonna scroll all the way down to where it says Display FPS. So let's take a closer look at the FPS tool so you know what to look out for when you're adjusting your settings for your PC. At the very top, we have the FPS. Below that, we have the limited by factor. Keep in mind that every PC, it doesn't matter how high end of a PC you have, you will always, always be limited by something. Your PC just cannot run to infinity. There's something that's gonna be limiting your PC. I don't wanna hear commentary, argument, or opinion. So with that in mind, when you're adjusting any of your graphics settings here, you can take a look at the limited by, and that'll tell you what is actually restricting your FPS, either your CPU or your GPU. Also pay attention to your GPU memory usage. If you exceed 85% on your GPU memory, this can also induce stutters into the sim. Okay, so now that you know how to access your FPS tool and how to read it somewhat, let's go over all the different settings for PC and VR. Now, I'm not gonna go in depth on each of these settings, so if you need to, you can pause the video and copy things down. Also, I will post down in the description my system specs so you get something for reference. The first thing that we're gonna go over today is anti-aliasing. Now, as you know, we have DLSS that's been implemented in the sim. For me, when I use DLSS, especially on monitor, even in VR, it really makes things blurry for me to read and I have to zoom way in either on gauges or the GPS units. But if we turn on DLSS, we have a couple different options here that we did not have before. Under DLSS Super Resolution, we now have an Auto, Quality, Balanced, Performance, and Ultra Performance. Oh, and we also have DLAA as well. I have not tried every single one of these settings on my system. I just use the quality setting to see what I got. And to be honest with you, I just prefer TAA. But if you are on a lower end system, DLSS can really give you that added boost that you need in performance to make your experience better while flying. So play around with this a little bit. And when you find something that works on your system, post your system specs down below and what settings you used, as it may help out other members. The next option that I wanted to touch on was VSync. So this is also something that we had talked about in the NVIDIA control panel. So remember in the control panel, I'm using application controlled. So that means anything I set in here will take effect in the sim. If you're using my alternate way of turning it on fast, 
then any of the VSync options will not apply inside of the sim. So for me, I've got VSync on and I'm using 100% monitor refresh rate. And that's also because in the NVIDIA control panel, remember we had went over how to adjust your monitor refresh rate. So that means it's going to limit my refresh rate to the 60 hertz that I had set there, which equates to 60 FPS. When you spawn into the sim, if you notice that you are limited by your CPU, then what I recommend to do is to turn down your level of detail. The terrain level of detail will highly impact your CPU. Next down on the list is off-screen terrain pre-caching. So what does the off-screen pre-caching actually do? Well, as your sim is downloading all of that data and information for everything that surrounds you, the off-screen pre-caching will remember all of that and keep it in a cache so that when you're turning your head, it already has that information saved so it can just display it on either your monitor or your VR headset. When you turn this down to anything other than Ultra, then all of that information now does not get saved, only some of it. So again, this might be something that you're going to have to play with on your system, and let me know your thoughts down below in the comments section. Below that, we have terrain vector data, and I found that this has very little impact on FPS. Below that is buildings, and this has a higher impact on FPS. What you'll also notice in your limiting factor, if you're limited by your GPU and you have low FPS, turning your buildings down in quality may help with that FPS score. But always remember, you're gonna be limited by something. Below that we have trees. This doesn't affect too much, so you can play around with that. The next item down that will greatly impact your FPS is volumetric clouds. I know this is a big one for everyone because we love seeing the high detailed clouds that are in the simulator. That's what makes this thing so spectacular. But unfortunately, it also plays a big impact on our FPS. So in the FPS tool, if you're noticing that you're limited by your GPU again, and you have low frame rates, turning your volumetric clouds down will help in that situation. Next down on the list is texture resolution. And this won't impact your FPS so much, but it will impact how much VRAM is being used on your GPU. The higher the resolution, the more VRAM is required to get that smooth gameplay. Now, one thing I did notice while in VR, if I have my texture resolution in Ultra, I was using about 95% of my VRAM. By turning it down to high, I'm now only using 60 to 70% of my VRAM and my gameplay is so much smoother. Now, some people might say, well, why do you have your PC then set on texture resolution high and not ultra and keep your VR on high? Well, that's because this is one of those settings that is required to restart your PC anytime you make a change. So if I turn this to low, go down to apply, the first thing that'll pop up is you need to restart your flight sim for it to take effect. That being said, that also applies to VR. So whenever you boot up your sim, it is going to load whatever texture resolution that you have set inside of your PC. So if you have it set on Ultra, it will load in with Ultra, and when you switch to VR mode, it will still be an Ultra texture resolution, and that's because you need to restart your PC for any settings to take effect. I have tested this out, and my findings have been correct. If you have any questions about this, post it down below in the comments section. Another one down here is shadow maps, and if you have this up too high, this can eat in your FPS a little bit. So if you notice that you're having some FPS issues, you could always turn down your shadow maps and the terrain shadows, and that will help out with your FPS. And this is also going to affect your limited by GPU inside of the FPS counter at the top. Another one that will affect your limited by GPU in the FPS counter will be your contact shadows as well as ambient occlusion. If you need to gain a little bit more FPS, reduce those down a little bit 
and you should see your FPS shoot up some. Below that is cube map reflections, and this one I don't see impact my PC that much, but in VR, I cannot run at 256, and I'm actually using 192. Ray March reflections, I have that set on ultra. All right, so let's go ahead and move over to VR and take a look at all of these settings. From top down, I have the alt screen pre-caching set to ultra, terrain vector data to ultra, and this one really doesn't affect your FPS that much, so crank it up. Buildings, trees, and grass I have all set on medium. Objects level of detail, 105. Biometric clouds on high. I have played with this in ultra and high, and I just get better performance when it's in high. Texture resolution we have set on high. Texture synthesis I also have on ultra. That's another one of those settings that doesn't really affect FPS all that much. Water waves does affect your FPS if, of course, you're flying near water. So if you're having some limited by GPU issues, turn your water waves down and that should help out with that. If anybody has any questions about any of these settings, let me know down below in the comments. One thing that I did forget here is the AMD Fidelity FX Sharpening. For VR, I have this set at 70, and I don't even know if it has, yeah. And in PC, I have it set at 100. What this is going to do is this will sharpen up any of your textures, say, on the ground. So if you go inside the sim and you turn your AMD fidelity down to zero and look at the pavement, and then turn it up to 200 and look at the pavement, you'll see that you can see much more detail in the cracks and things in the pavement, but it doesn't seem to add any sharpening to any of the buildings or anything. So let me know what your thoughts are on the Fidelity FX sharpening. Now, I know a lot of people are going to be, wait a minute, don't finish up yet. There's one setting you forgot. The NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency Mode. Now we have this option in both PC and VR, but only one of them can be adjusted. So let me explain what I mean. If we set the NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency to on and boost, it doesn't really matter what you set your VR to because this is another one of those settings that whatever you set your PC to will automatically carry over into VR. So for instance, if I go to VR mode and I turn this on off, well actually you can see here that I can't even change this. And if you come over here, you can see that this just changed. So there's a little bug in this somewhere that they're probably going to work out on some hotfix, but we're just going to have to work around that for right now. But just know that anything that you punch in here will also be the same in VR. So what is NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency Mode? We went over this setting inside the NVIDIA control panel, and this was in the latency section, and we had switched this to Ultra. There's now a setting inside of the simulator that allows us to do the same thing. But because we had turned it on in the control panel, it hard codes everything to automatically be running in ultra mode when we're using the sim. But I did find that turning on and boost did give me another FPS or two, so it's worth your while to turn that on. Just keep in mind that whatever you turn your PC on will also reflect in VR once you enter VR. All right, ladies and gents, that's going to finish us up for today's video. If you have any comments or questions, post them down below in the comments section, and I will get right back to you. If the video helped you out today, be sure to hit that subscribe, tick on that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. To all my flight simmer friends around the world, keep the blue side up, and we will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching, everybody.